Hello and welcome to this tutorial on EIGRP. This is part two and we're going to talk about how routes are calculated and then how a network running EIGRP behaves when a failure happens. So how does it converge? Okay, so we have to start with the EIGRP metric and this will help us make sense of everything. Now OSPF had a simple metric that was cost which was only based on bandwidth. EIGRP's metric is a combination of four different factors. So the first one is bandwidth, then delay, interface load, and interface reliability. And let's quickly go through these. The bandwidth factor refers to the lowest link in the path to a destination. So for instance, if we have these four routers, and they're all connected, and router A wants to get to this destination, it will use for the bandwidth factor the lowest bandwidth link. So if this is 10 megs, this is 100 megs, and this is 1 gigabit, it will use the 10 megabit link for the value for bandwidth. Okay, so keep in mind it's the lowest bandwidth out of all the links in a path to a destination. That's all bandwidth is. Now delay refers to the cumulative delay from the beginning to the destination. So for instance, if this link had a delay of 1, and this had a delay of 2, and a delay of 3, we would add all of these up, and that would be our delay. So delay is cumulative, the total factor, the total number. Now interface load and interface reliability, they are no longer typically used when we run EIGRP. And the reason being is, if they're not used properly, they can actually introduce a lot of instability into EIGRP. So we're actually going to ignore them and that's going to make our lives much easier. Um, and this is actually recommended standard practice to not include interface load and interface reliability. Okay, so this is the metric. Let's take a look at actually now how it's used. In this diagram, router B is sending a route update to router A and it's about a network that hangs off of router D. So you can see the two values included in that update, the bandwidth and the delay. So the delay is pretty simple. All we do is add up the delay of all of the links involved between router B and the destination, which is there. So we have two links. It is a value of 2 and 2, so the total delay is 4. The second value is the bandwidth. And here, router B needs to state the lowest bandwidth link. So it has a 100 megabit link, and then it has a gigabit link. So it put in the 100 megabit link information, and those two factors were sent over to router A. Now this route update and this metric that router B sends over to router A, this has a very specific name in EIGRP. It is called the reported distance. And quite simply, from router A's perspective, that's the metric that it receives from router B. Okay, the reported distance. Now when router A receives this information, it needs to go ahead and take it, but also add something to it. Because now there's a new segment that needs to be accounted for. In order for router A to get to this destination, it needs to factor in the bandwidth and the delay of this new segment. So for the delay, it simply adds 4 for the link between A and B to the cumulative value of 4 that it received from router B. So the new delay is 8, and router A uses that new value when it um, uses the formula, the algorithm, in order to compute the metric. Not only that, it's going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, bandwidth between it and router B and see that it's a 10 megabit per second link. Now, the information it received, the reported distance, used a variable of 100 megabits per second. Router A realizes that the link between it and router B is lower than that, so the value it's going to use for bandwidth will be the 10 megabit per second link value. Okay, so router A needs to account for the link between it and router B. So it throws in the new cumulative delay and it throws in the new lowest bandwidth link into the formula and it will come up with its own metric to get to this destination off of router D. 
Now, this particular metric that router A came up with itself, that has a very specific name as well. This is known as the feasible distance. And quite simply, that is the metric calculated by the router. So again, router B sends over route information to router A, and that metric is the reported metric. And router A takes that reported metric, adds to it, changes it as is necessary when the new link is accounted for, and then it has to come up with its own metric. That new metric, which is only relevant to router A, is known as the feasible distance. Spend some time to make sure you understand the difference between those because those two terms are used all the time when you talk about how routes are created in EIGRP. Okay, let's take a look at router A now. And here it's going to receive three route updates from different neighbors all about the same destination. So it's going to look at the reported distance in each one It'll go ahead and run the metric itself and create the feasible distance for each of those routes. So in other words, the metric it creates itself. And then it's going to compare those three feasible distances. And the one with the lowest value is going to win. And that winner will be placed into the route table. Now in EIGRP, the best route is known as the successor. Okay, you're going to hear that term a lot. Now because we had multiple routes to this one destination, EIGRP does something kind of interesting. It keeps those other routes and it kind of puts them on hold. It's going to do that because in case there's a failure, in case the successor route goes away, it fails somehow, router A has two backup routes on hand. Now these backup routes also have a very specific name and they're known as feasible successors. Because it's feasible, it's possible that they can replace the successor route should it fail. So fast convergence is achieved because a backup route is kept on hand, ready for use. And no computations are needed when a failure occurs. Remember OSPF has to rerun the Dijkstra algorithm on the new topology database? Well, that doesn't happen here because the backup is already known to the router. So this takes about one or two seconds to happen. As soon as the successor dies, router A knows the feasible successor. It takes it and puts it right into the route table. There's very little CPU load as well because it doesn't have to rerun some algorithm in order to figure out the backup route. Okay, so that's kind of the behind the scenes magic of EIGRP when it has multiple destinations, uh, sorry, multiple routes to a single destination. But what if a feasible successor is not available. So let's say router A only learned one route update for this destination. Well, in this case, if the successor fails, router A is going to have to go ahead and find some new route information. And this is where something called dual comes into play. That stands for diffusing update algorithm. And really, this is a process that EIGRP uses in order to gather information from the neighbors and to determine a replacement route. And it does this all with, without letting a loop happen in the network. So basically, what happens is router A loses the successor route, and then it realizes I don't have any feasible successors. So it'll send a query message out to the neighbors and this is going to be looking for new route information. Basically, router A is going to ask the neighbors for route information. Eventually, the neighbors will send back a reply message with that route information. Router A will then go ahead and update its route table, and now it has a new route, and it can continue routing traffic for that destination. Now, this happens pretty fast, but because it doesn't have a backup route on hand and it has to ask its neighbors for help, it takes a little bit longer. Usually, no more than 10 seconds, but if you compare that to the one, maybe two seconds of having a feasible successor, then that's a big difference. Okay, so these are two really big, important terms in EIGRP. The successor route and the feasible successor definitely commit those to memory. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know that EIGRP has a metric that is made up of four different values, the, the bandwidth, the delay, load, and reliability. However, only two of those are used, bandwidth and delay. 
Now when a router creates its own metric, it's known as the feasible distance, and every router is going to do that for all of the routes it receives. Now the information it gets from its neighbors, that's the reported distance. Likewise, the route with the lowest feasible distance is the winner, and that winner is known as the successor. All of the routes that are not successors are known as feasible successors, meaning they're the backup routes, and they could replace the primary route should it fail. And then finally we looked at if there are no backup routes, no feasible successors, then EIGRP it enacts the dual process and that's basically where it contacts its neighbors to get information because it just doesn't have a backup route. And that process takes longer than uh, it would have been had it had a feasible successor in the route table already. Okay, so that's it. That is the EIGRP route calculation and convergence process. Thanks for watching.